Bud Creek Nationals presented by Yamaha. And it's all part of the AMA Chevrolet Motocross Championship. And this is stop number four on a picture perfect day in Maryland. And we welcome you, Todd Harris along with Cameron Steele, Jamie Little reporting from the pit. And Cameron, what a day it would be to hit 100 for Ricky Carmichael. I mean, Ricky Carmichael has done it all. He is so amazing, so smooth, so calculated, but so fast and willing to throw around the motorcycle. And things haven't changed as he switched from the two-stroke to the big four-stroke. Well, his starts have been impeccable. His cornering speed, everything. A lot of people thought there might be a learning curve on the bike. has not been the case this year. It's so crazy. I tell you, I don't even think about it. And... Uh... It just comes and comes, keeps coming, and uh, it's unreal. I tell you, I uh, I love what I do, and uh, I just I, I I can't believe it. I you know people say, man, you're gonna win, you could win a hundred races. I'm just like, I can't even believe. I can't believe. I feel, it makes me feel like I've been racing a long time, and I really haven't. Uh, but you know, this is a good track, and uh, it'd, be, it'd be great to do it. You know, my my grandpa came here to watch me, and uh, he hasn't been to one in a while, so hopefully uh, hopefully I could do it for him. Ricky Carmichael's grandfather's on hand as we take a look through three races. It is Carmichael out in front with a perfect score. But don't forget, there's a lot of other talent out there, including a guy named Chad Reed. And this guy has got so much talent. I think just being 100% comfortable. I think, uh, you know, Ricky is a, a great outdoor rider and uh, just has a great base. And uh, I think that's what it takes. You know, Supercross, I, uh, I've ridden it. I've been around it a lot. And, and I know... You know, I know, I know what to ask for. You know, if my bike's doing something a little wrong, I know, you know, exactly where I need to do, and, and I know the direction I need to go. And outdoors, I kind of struggle a little bit with that. And, and uh, you know, not taking anything away from Ricky, but that's that's 100%. He's key. He's always comfortable. He's always fast. And uh, that's what you need to do to win. Number 12, David Villeman coming through, also on board the Yamaha. As we pointed out, Chad Reed has signed with Yamaha through 2005. And Kevin Windham, number 14, on the four stroke, now he's running on the four stroke with Ricky Carmichael. There's another guy that can give Ricky a run for money and keep him from getting that 100. Well, as we said, Carmichael has been fast, and look at that, Cameron. A 222.54, that is unbelievable. It definitely is, and Kevin Windham needs to keep him in check. And we know Kevin didn't like the track last week, but he has had great success here, and he loves the track, running it in the counterclockwise direction. It is still going to be a little bit slippery. There hasn't been rain here, but they have been watering, and there will be some ruts developing, but for the most part, this track will definitely hold up long lap time. 1.4 miles on a picture-perfect day, temperature about 70 degrees. Right now, let's send it down to the pit area and check in with Jamie Lynn. There's a lot of fathers on the line today, including a few expectant dads like Tim Ferry, Kevin Windham, and David Villeman. So from all of us here at ESPN, we want to say happy Father's Day to all of you and enjoy the rest of the race. Tim Ferry getting ready, number 15, also on board the Yamaha. As we take a look at our Honda starting grid, Ricky Carmichael, Kevin Windham, Chad Reed, Sean Hamlin with some great practice times. Joaquin Rodriguez, number 108, and James Pavoni, number 64. Keep your eye on them. And he's talking about Pavoni. He's a new dad, so a, a good run here in Father's Day wouldn't hurt his feelings any. I guarantee that. And remember, here we are going into a right-hand first corner, which means that is your brake side. You have to fully commit, and a lot of guys want to put the leg out early. Tough. Brake, leg out, balance. Let's see what happens. We are off and racing at Bud's Creek as they make the big right-hand turn. Everyone on the outside trying to get a jump to go. This is the dicey part. Everyone grabs the minus, but they all stay up. One rider goes down, two, three, four, and we got a pile up. Well, we had some riders go down first. It looks Sean Hamlin grabbing the shoulder oh. there. And uh, Sean's been doing a great job on the two strokes. And tough break for Sean, but great start for, you know, our World Supercross GP champion, Heath Boss, out front. Trio of Yamahas to the front of the pack. David Villeman's up there. Ricky Carmichael, number four, settles for fourth place right now. So Carmichael will go to work as he starts his assault on 100. And right there, one of the tricky sections of the track here. Lots of off-camber, downside turns. It's, it's a hard place to ride at times, and there will be no burns developing in some of those spots, especially if you want to dive inside. And speaking of diving to the inside, Chad Reed making his move towards the front. Chad Reeves in first, number 12, David Villeman currently sits in third, and Carmichael comes into view in fourth. 
And there it was. Billman takes a look over his shoulder and gets a look at that big four stroke of number four, RC Carmichael, coming through. He moves into third place. And that double jump, it is, it's small, but it's really tough coming out of that corner. So we'll watch during the day, see if guys try to jump it. You know, they want to get over it and keep their momentum going. And uh, Ricky does a great job getting over the. Even though you saw him yeah. chase it a bit as he chases down Heath Boss. Heath Boss currently in second. Ricky Carmichael, number four, sits in third. Chad Reed is your leader right now. This is Moto number one, the 250 class from Bud's Creek, Maryland. Carmichael going for 100. 100 wins. I mean, That's Jeremy awesome. McGrath in 89, and and Hannah at 70. Johnson, Ricky Johnson, at 61. How? That is how great Ricky Carmichael is. Carmichael takes the pass. So Carmichael now in second place with Chad in front. But let's go back and look at the start one more time. Sean Hamlin, who really had a great gate pick in the center of your screen, Cameron. Well, I'm not sure. There's definitely a, a crash behind him. It looks like Sean just kind of high sides it there and maybe gets clipped a little bit by another rider going by, but definitely down in pain and tough break as he heads off on the asterisk mobile medical unit and smile. Well, maybe a wince of pain there. Well, it's the left shoulder, left arm. We'll have to find out what the situation is there and if he can race in moto number two. Meanwhile, back to racing action in moto number one. It is still Ricky Carmichael trying to chase down number 22, Chad Reed. He bossed it to third. Well, this is something that Chad definitely needed. He needed to be out front and see if he can run out in front with Carmichael. We'll see if he can keep him honest. We know Ricky's had the speed. We looked at the practice times. He was the fastest guy out there, but... In the race, Reedy pumped up, feeling good. We'll see if he can hold him off. Why do you think Chad Reed struggles as much as he does? And I say struggle, he still runs top three all the time. But it's his Supercross success does not translate it like over the motocross success. Well, in his interview earlier in the show, he talked about how he grew up riding Supercross. Right. In Australia, it's not really a big outdoor circuit. We saw him struggle a little bit with the 125 on the outdoors. He never really rode 125. So this is a learning curve. And, and Ricky, I mean, he's been racing outdoors in the United States his whole life. So Chad Reed out in front, number 22, signed with Yamaha through the 2005 season. Ricky Carmichael on board a Honda. As you all know, he will be making the switch to Suzuki next year in the Supercross Series. But right now, he is trying to win yet another title for Team Honda. And the other thing, too, we're talking about not used to things. Chad Reed is riding the four-stroke right. only a few races in. You know, he's really, he's really at home on the two-stroke in the Supercross. And here, you know, obviously outdoors little bit of a weaker uh, venue for him but also switching that big four stroke as he gets faster and faster he's going to give Ricky Carmichael more and more problems and, and right now Ricky's not exactly jumping all over him. Well Chad Reed has definitely been moving up to third overalls to second overall so he's a smart kid he will figure this four stroke out he will figure out the motocross he's just too talented of an athlete not to and, and that only means good things for fans because Ricky Carmichael and Chad Reed have some great battles still to come. But right now it is Reed out in front with Ricky Carmichael in second. And watch this, this is one of those off-camber downside turns. Both riders finding that inside line. Ricky kind of popping out a little bit. But it's all about lines trying to find your spot. Ricky having a little hesitation up in that corner. Chad Reed able to hold off Ricky Carmichael for the time being. Carmichael looking to be just picking his spot. Look at the exit speed. And Chad Reed, you saw him go way to the outside of that jump, a little bit less lift there, Ricky in the middle. So Ricky's looking for different lines. He's moving around, and Chad comes out of the berm, basically fumbles that section, and has to hop out into the next section. Yep. Ricky Carmichael, picture perfect, to the inside, and he's by for the lead. So Carmichael hooks up the four-stroke a little quicker than his arch-rival Chad Reed. Both men, as Cameron pointed out, on that four-stroke. Ricky able to test a little more, though, when he was down recovering from that knee injury and having the surgery done. But right now it is Carmichael out in front. Chad Reed sits in second place. This is moto number one from Bud's Creek, Maryland. Stick around. It's going to be a good one. Your running order, Carmichael, Reed, Boss, Villeman, and Wyndham, top five. Suzuki, something. The 2004 AMA Chevrolet Motocross Championship are brought to you by Suzuki. Maker of performance-driven motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. By Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. By Chevrolet, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months. The new Chevrolet, an American revolution. 
and by Cycle World Magazine, the most widely read and trusted source of motorcycling information. And we are back to Bud's Creek, Maryland. The Bud's Creek Nationals presented by Yamaha Todd Harris along with Cameron Steele. And there is your leader, Ricky Carmichael, here in moto number one. And just taking a look at Ricky Carmichael, just finding the lines and looking smooth, jumping back here. See Heath Boss, third place, kind of jumping around in some lines there. So definitely got to pick your line and hold it. Billiman may be looking for a way around, going to the inside there quickly out of the corner, but he's also got to watch his back. Billiman, yes, a great move, diving to the inside. It looks oh. like Wyndham washing the front tire there a bit. And yeah, Wyndham did moving. go down. So Wyndham slides back as he was threatening to go into third place with Billiman. He will drop way back. He's got it one more time. From a different angle, Wyndham just trying to grab the binders as not to get together. There's only that one rut. And as you can see, the real downhill camber there. So he was trying to get in that line behind him. Doesn't stall the motorcycle, which is good news. A, a warm four-stroke can be a force to be reckoned with when trying to start it. So David Villeman in third, Heath Boss in fourth, and here comes Kevin Wyndham. But now Kevin Wyndham has company, whereas before he had a little bit of breathing room. Now it looks like Burner, Michael Burn coming up, and he's on a two-stroke, if I'm not mistaken, riding the best position for a two-stroke in sixth place. Kevin Wyndham, let's talk about him. Had a great Supercross year this year, finished second behind Chad Reed. That has not translated altogether well over to the motocross series for him. It certainly hasn't, and he really hated Southwick, the last event, and, you know, he doesn't like the sand. He's not afraid to say it. He's got out of there safe, and, and Berner, right now, oh, speaking of two-stroke battles, he's got Ernesto Fonseca, who's just freshly back from knee surgery himself. They're battling out for the rights, and it looks like uh, maybe part of his kidney belt flying around behind there, and, of course, he's the teammate of this guy. Ricky Carmichael, your leader, out in front on board the Honda. Talking about Ernesto Fonseca, Ricky's teammate, at least through this year, what do you hear about Fonseca for next year? Well, ironically enough, I keep hearing Suzuki. He's going to team it back <laughs> up with his, his partner in crime, Ricky Carmichael. But, of course, that's just a rumor, folks. Just a rumor. Back to fourth place. The battle continues. This is Heath Boss, number 28, on board the Yamaha. Kevin Wyndham, number 14, on that big four-stroke, reeling him right in after going down and washing out that front tire. Wyndham back in the fray currently sits in fifth. And Wyndham going to go outside and try to get the drive coming out of this corner. You see Heath sliding into that burn, but he's going to have the inside line going in here. And Heath's an interesting character. And talking to him as the season got started, he's like, you know, my, I have kind of a funky just go for it style. And he says it comes from his dad. Kept moving him up in class. You know, traditionally, the dads or, or the riders stay in a class. And looks like Wyndham just looking anywhere to pass him. But the dads keep the riders in the class till the organizations kick them out. We're talking about from Sand beginner to yep. junior, right? Sandbaggers at the track. But Heath Boss's dad did just the opposite. He won one race in a class. Boom, he was kicked up to the next class. And, oh, Kevin Wyndham nice. almost looked like what we call a brake check. You know, slows down to the berm and kind of throws Boss's momentum off. I don't think it was on purpose, but definitely put Boss back a bit. Kevin Wyndham now moves into fourth place. Heath Boss slides back to fifth place. And... Wyndham looking like he's starting to figure out this track and that bike. I know he's very comfortable on the four-stroke, but Cameron, today you pointed it out. They are sliding into corners. It's almost like slick track racing. It's really a tough track to ride, especially, you know, you get in some sections, there's some loose dirt on top, and then you get into some of those off-cambers. It's almost, it's like a really hard clay, and, and you have a sliding factor in there, so it's, it's kind of hard to pick the tire you're going to use here. And the, I know the tire companies, the factory guys, have a lot of options, but they really got to work with it. This is one of those off-camber turns. You see Kevin going inside and going to the outside berm, making sure he can't slide any farther back. The folks at Dunlop, Bridgestone, Michelin, all trying to figure out what will work best for their rider here. And today, Bud's Creek has given them a, really a mixed bag, a little bit of sand, a little bit of soft. They've watered the track and take nothing away from the grounds crew because they have done a fantastic job keeping this track looking the way it has. So and Wyndham will go by a lap rider there. Has to slow down momentarily, but he's back on the gas. And coming up, this uh, next section here is the famous Henry Hill. Uh -oh. We're not going to see it. Kevin Johnson, the younger of the Johnson's brother, Johnson brothers, his older brother uh, Kevin has been injured. And oh, he's riding Carmichael's 250. down as well. Oh, it's contagious. And you see Ricky giving it some kicks there. We talked about four strokes being hard to start, but wow. he gets it started as Reed goes by to the inside. So he's going to have to pass chad reed twice in one moto if he wants to win this moto 
Well, Chad has certainly been given his opportunities. We'll have to find out why Ricky went down and what went wrong there. But you put it out just moments ago, your words proving prophetic. A hot four-stroke is not an easy beast to kick over. Well, they do have the hot, hot start uh, right. handle. And, you know, I think the real key to it is, and I've got to be honest, I'm not a four-stroke rider, but uh, I think it's just being calm and not getting too excited about right. kicking it. Right. And if you're just an average rider like me, we out riding, you love the four-stroke and the power. Everything about it is phenomenal. But for Ricky, it's unbelievable. Let's go back and have a look at the replay one more time and find out what went wrong with RC. Taking a look here, he's obviously on the binders. And it looks like he just slid into that corner and just one of those funky stall wow. kind of things. And the one thing you're talking about, what you like about the four-stroke, here at this track, you like the trackability. Right because it is slippery and there is some off cameras and Ricky's not wasting any time getting up on Chad Reed. You see him going to the outside. Chad goes a little farther out, but Ricky looks like he's diving to the inside line. This is where we saw Chad yep. miss that berm and go to the outside. This time he just takes the outside and Ricky takes the line. Carmichael drops that rear wheel into a rut and just punches it out of there. For a second, I think Chad Reed was thinking about taking the line back away from him, unable to answer. So Chad Reed once again slides into second place and that man has got to be happy. Be smart. Mike Gosler, Ricky Carmichael's mechanic, standing by with Jamie Little. Hey Mike, that's the closest we've seen Reed to Ricky all day long. You think he even looked at your pit board? No, I, I just got around him right here. He stalled it back there, and, and Reed got around him. He just, I think he got a little bit on the brakes a little too hard to stall the engine. You think it's the pressure that's getting to him today? No, there's no pressure. He just probably made a little mistake, got in the corner a little too hot, stalled it. No big deal. Well, if there's any pressure, there's no one better to handle it than number four, Ricky Carmichael. As he mentioned at the top of the show, his grandfather is here, so I'm sure he wants to put on a great show for the elder statesman and the Carmichael family, and Ricky doing just that on board the Honda. Number four, Carmichael continues to lead here in moto number one. Bud's Creek, Maryland is the site. When we come back, the conclusion of moto number one, Carmichael continues to lead. Join us all summer long for you. Hi, I'm Nick Way of Team Suzuki, and I'm here with Suzuki's Riding Tip of the Week. This week, we're going to be focusing on off-camber corners. When approaching an off-camber turn, the best thing you can do is set up for the turn a little bit to the outside. Make the turn a little bit less sharp, carry a little bit more speed. Once you get into the corner, it's important to weight the outside peg and apply the front brake real smooth, just before you put your leg out to stir yourself a little bit more. Once you get the bike slowed down and you get into that groove, it's important to be really smooth with power delivery with the clutch and throttle at the same time. Let's look at it one more time. That's your Team Suzuki riding tip of the week. And our thanks to number 27, Nick Way, for the riding tip as Ricky Carmichael continues to lead here at the Bud Creek National, presented by Yamaha. Carmichael on board a Honda. We'll be moving to Suzuki. What can you say about the guy, Cameron? He's on his way to getting that 100 as we go back. And this is a great battle with James Pavoni. Uh, looks like Pavoni out there and uh, running inside the top 10 right now. And his best finish ever at an outdoor national is uh, Bruce Tayoga, also known as Binghamton, a 10th place back in 2002. So I know Pavoni, who's a new father, we talked about it. Wouldn't be a bad thing for a little Father's Day gift. A little podium action for the younger. James Pavoni, Nick Way, Joaquin Rodriguez, number 108. There's Nick Way who's helping us out on Suzuki riding tip. And here's Joaquin Rodriguez, number 108. Had a great year last year, Cameron. It seems like he's struggling just a little bit this year as he's on board his KTM and he's it losing looks, power. Yeah, he was slowing down coming down that hill. Not sure what's going on with him. Great guy and, you know, good personality. Got to meet him in Europe and hang out a little bit with him. And, you know, I think he needs to just uh, put it together like this guy. Ricky Carmichael, your leader on the final lap here in moto number one. Carmichael putting on a nice show for the family who made the trip here. And uh, the perfect season continues. His march to 100 wins, another championship. I don't think there's any kind of pressure that Ricky Carmichael cannot deal right. with. And, you know, uh, I know a lot of people right now are talking about the motocross his nations, whether we're going to send a team or not. And uh, obviously, no doubt, this man would would be the leader of the team if such a thing does happen. Well, if you had to put your vote in, who would you put a vote in for? As Rodriguez continues to try to kick this thing through, he's, he's going for the points. He's pushing right now, which uh, 
I don't know if he's going to be pushing this whole course. And Nick Way trying to make a pass, trying to move up one position maybe on James Polboni. So on the gas right here, both riders inside the top ten. But, hey, every point counts when it yep. comes to the championship and for these overall. Nick Way currently sitting in 10th on board of Suzuki, number 27, just behind number 64. That's James Pavoni Jr. Good battle to the end. And Pavoni, a privateer rider, which means he's doing it without the factory support. And Ricky Carmichael giving us a look over on uh, the top of Henry Hill. I think Carmichael looking for another Racer X cover, which, by the way, did you see the last Racer X, the cover and the back page. Yeah, it's pretty sick. I mean, uh... The Racer X breaking new ground with that. Uh, that was phenomenal. Yeah, that was really cool. And Ricky, of course, continues to break ground of his own. And uh, you watch him ride, and it's the end of the moto. He's still on the gas, and, you know, he's just finding the line smoothly. The bike is always working perfectly, and he's just at one with the machine. And it comes from all the years of experience and all the championships, and he just... You rarely, if ever, see this guy flustered. Well, talking about Moto Donations, I mean, think about this team if you sent over this man, Ricky Carmichael, James Stewart, Kevin Windham. That yeah. would be unbelievable. The knock on Kevin Windham is they're, they're going to where it's a, a sand track, and, right. and uh, you know, Kevin doesn't like it, so definitely the speed. Uh, people are talking about Mike Brown and Tim Ferry, and, you know, Bubba's saying, and they're saying in the Bubba camp, he may not go because he wants to concentrate on the 250 class for next year. Ricky Carmichael picks up the victory in an unassuming fashion, but it is Carmichael with the win. When we come back to Bud's Creek, Maryland, we'll talk to Carmichael and recap Moto 1. A Chevrolet Motocross Championships, here's Ricky Carmichael. I stalled it, actually. That's the first time I've stalled it in a race situation. And uh, I don't know, just uh, made a little bit of an error uh, it was good, though. I had a good time battling with Chad. Uh, I had to fight to get by him the first time, and then uh, when I stalled it, he got back by me. So it was fun. Good for the fans. And I could tell when I fell and then got back race, and they were all cheering and liking it. So it was a fun race. As we take a look at our Suzuki Motor results, it's Carmichael, Reed, Villeman, Wyndham, Voss, and Fonseca. Pavoni finishing ninth, and Nick Way rounding out in the top ten. Well, it was a great race for Ricky Carmichael, no question about that. Probably a little more frustrating for Chad Reed, who got passed not once but twice. Let's check in with Jamie. Chad, this week it looks like you're reeling Ricky in a little bit, but he made a little bobble. You were right there. What happened? No, this weekend I felt really good. You know, I had a good weekend last weekend at Southwick, and uh, just trying to take small steps forward, and uh, I think we're getting there. And uh, Ricky still got me covered in speed, but, you know, fitness-wise and riding-wise, I feel like I'm getting better. And uh, it's much more fun to be able to at least see him, you know, and he had a little crash, and I got the, you know, a second chance. But, uh, you know, he's riding awesome. I want to congratulate him on that, and uh, just looking forward to the second part of Always the gentleman, Chad Reed, but look at this. This is the story. Ricky Carmichael faster than everybody in the lap times. If you keep it like that, you're going to win. Jamie's with David Billiman. David, you uh, had a nice battle there with, with uh, Heath Bob well, for a while. Tell us that. about how you got around him. Uh, actually, uh, on that big, uh, big off camber, I went inside of him. And, uh, you know, he was running really good at first, and uh, I couldn't get around him. And, uh, you know, our backs are really uh, working really good today. And I'm really happy to be, uh, you know, in, um, in third place, first moto. And, uh, you know, this second moto, I have to be uh, really strong. And uh, I want to thank uh, the team and, uh, you know, my wife and my kid. And, uh, you know, it's great to be on the podium on the weekend. Happy Father's Day. Uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> and remember, nobody does more to protect your right to ride than the American Motorcyclist Association. Every racer on the track is an AMA member. How about you? Call 1-800-AMA, join, or visit amadirectlink.com. The AMA writes, riding, racing. Well, right now it's time to go outside the lines. This week's subject, Grant Langston and Langston Racing. Once Grant won the World uh, Championship, KTM asked him to come over to America, and he asked me to come over and, and work with him for, for a year. So we, we literally arrived at uh, Los Angeles Airport with a couple of suitcases, and um, my intention was always to go back to South Africa, and then my wife, Grant's mother, Amanda, decided that it would be an idea to try and trade here in America because we'd been running a business in South Africa doing import and export, and we imported a couple of exhaust pipes, and they started doing well, so we got ourselves a business license, and uh, we started phoning dealers up and seeing if they'd be interested in buying our product, and 
it just sort of grew from there. I think racing is one of those um, sports where you do kind of retire at a young age, uh, early 30s normally. So I think I got about 10 years of racing. And um, yeah, who knows, I might have to take over this business and uh, be here and, and run a, a, a regular job. It was actually a golden opportunity because you've got the, the Lake Elsinore track, which has been here for as long as I can remember reading in magazines and seeing videos and things. And so we decided to, to do retail and, and a workshop, which is more of a speed shop, a, a performance hop-up shop. You know, me and my dad are, uh, you know, partners in this, and my mother works with us as well. And um, so it is a family business. Even my sister works at the cashier after school, so uh, it's the whole Langston family here big thing is I've learned what a massive market this is. Um, I always used to wonder why, why American industry and whatever was geared up for, for mass production and I know I now know. At the end of the day at the moment we're niche marketeers. We just want a very small portion of, of that um, big pie out there, the big motocross pie. Coming up, Ricky Carmichael goes for 100. Stay with us. Do you have the right? This is Moto number two of the 250 class on the line, set to go. Chad Reed, number 22, who had the lead twice in the first moto, will try to get the win. Right now, let's check in with Jamie Little. This is it. This is the moment Ricky Carmichael and all of his fans have been waiting for. He's going for his 100th AMA victory. That's Supercross and Motocross wins combined. He's been running the number 99 on his pants the last two days. That 99 is gone as he hopes to capture 100. So Ricky goes for 100. Kevin Windham looking to get on the podium. Should be an interesting moto number two. As we take a look at our Honda starting grid, Carmichael Windham and Reed. Sean Hamlin, the word is he has an injury to his elbow. He will not be racing. I repeat, not racing here in moto number two. Joaquin Rodriguez has got his bike figured out on the KTM. He will be in there as will the rest of the crew, Rusty Holland and Brandon Butler also in there, and Tommy Hoffmaster. Good to see him running the Outdoor Series. So here we are, Ernesto Fonseca getting geared up, ready to roll. Will he get 100, Cameron? That is the big question. If you're a betting man, I think the odds are in his favor, but as we know, anything can happen. Well, after his performance of motor number one, how can you guess against him? Let's see how he does in the start. The drag race down to that big right-hand turn. Looks and like everybody threw cleanly yep. there, and guess who? Ricky Carmichael, your leader, picking up the whole shot here, and motor number two goes to a tear-off right away, hoping that he won't have to do that again because he'll stay out of the roost until he gets to lap traffic, but the track looks good for the final moto of the day, picks himself a nice, fat rut, and digs in. Yeah, the track is really set up. There's still a couple slippery spots. You'll see the tires blown out, and also a couple loose berms. Watch them on the off-cameras, but Ricky has been picture-perfect and a great start for Michael Byrne, who was right there in second, third, as it may be now, and maybe even slipping back to fourth, because we know Villeman and Reed were right there as well. Green flag is out. Carmichael leads them through with a pair of Yamahas behind him. Chad Reed currently running in third place. And Villeman, we saw, come with the second place in Hangtown. We know he has the speed. He's one of the greatest riders we have on the circuit. We'll see if he can hold off his teammate. David Villeman, number 12, making changes this year throughout the Supercross series as he departs his relationship with David Bailey as his trainer and decides to go it alone, try some new things, new father. So all kinds of changes in the Cobra's life. Number 12, David Villeman, originally from France, now living in Texas. And he takes a look over his shoulder as he hears Chad Reed coming on that four-stroke. And he just swung it wide, almost like professional courtesy because he knows the Chad is also racing for the overall. I mean, Billman was third. Right. He's mixed up in the overall, but maybe he thinks Chad has a better shot of catching up to Ricky. And the way it's set up, if Chad Reed gets the victory in moto number two over Carmichael by virtue of a two and a one in the second moto, he would get the overall, thus keeping Ricky from getting 100 today on a beautiful day in Bud's Creek. And Chad grabbing a tear off. You can see there's definitely some braking bumps, but yeah. it hasn't set up really rough anywhere on the track. I mean, in the couple years past, definitely seen more, and that could be due to weather, and the weather's just been perfect oh, yeah. here. And, and uh, Chad blasting through this corner, heading for the Henry Hill, as they call it, where Doug Henry uh, accidentally jumped down and ended up breaking his back. Uh, 
a few years back. Unbelievable. And, yeah, just an unbelievable image. And this is it right here. Henry actually took off from there and landed down right about there in the corner. So definitely a scary crash. And Doug Henry now racing Supermoto and heading for the X Games as some of his contemporaries or the newer faces of motocross battle it out oh here. My. And oh, look at that. Going down, Washington. David Ganolfi, number 461, getting together there momentarily. It looked like with Kevin Windham, who's running way back in 21st position. And a tough break for David. I mean, he was running in a pretty good position. You see Windham just on the gas and just sliding it around the corner, comes back in. And David wasn't able to stop. Hooks the back, high sides, puts his leg out, and hopefully he just gets right back on the bike. And this is a tough break for him. Tommy Hoffmaster running in 20th place, number 93. When I think of Hoffmaster, I think of that start he got in Salt Lake City this year on the Supercross, just a beautiful hole shot, and then he gave it all away. So that's racing. Right now, let's send it down to Jamie Little, who's standing by with Jonathan Hyland. Jonathan, we're having a hard time finding you today. You're kind of hiding out over here, and you don't look too happy. What's going on with K-Dub? I have no idea. Last week in Southwood, we had a good race. We got third considering he doesn't like sand and everything and I don't know it's one of those weekends the weather's great but it's not didn't get a good jump off the gate uphill battle the whole race now so it's one of those weekends but what is it seven six more races to go so it's still a long season but it's a hard weekend hard weekend indeed for his man number 14 Kevin Windham who finished fourth in moto number one and I don't know Cameron I mean this with Ricky riding the way he is you can't give him anything definitely can and even with Reedy and Billiman's been on the gas you, you got to be there every time and Tim Ferry looking for some lines and James Pavoni just yeah. having another good moto up there right now fifth place unfortunately sliding back but uh, that is Tim Ferry uh, and I know he's coming back from injury but Tim's so fast a guy that that can win motos he's proven that in the past and I think as he gets back up to speed from his injury uh, of his wrist I think he's going to become more and more of a factor we'll see him up there with Chad and with David and, and maybe with Ricky Carmichael. We talked about the Motor to Nations team possibly being put together for the Team USA. Tim Ferry would not be a bad addition to that team if you could get Ricky and Bubba on there as well. Well, especially with it being, in, at, like we said, in a, at a sand track or a pseudo sand track and Tim Ferry coming from Florida and definitely no stranger to railing the Sandy right. Berms. So Tim Ferry moves up to fourth place. Just ahead of him is number 26 on board the Kawasaki in fourth. That is Michael Byrne and a, a well-placed rider on a two-stroke. And for sure, and you know, I was talking to his mechanic and even Michael Byrne, and I think they're just frustrated. I, I think they just weren't clicking on everything. It seems like this weekend he's picked it up just a little bit. We'll have to talk to him and, and see what maybe some of the changes are, but definitely looks focused. He's more in the fray. And, Unfortunately, Tim Ferry looks like he's going to get by him, but he's carrying the speed. We'll look for Tim to see if he can find some different lines. And I don't think it's just the four stroke. I think I think Timmy's carrying his speed in the corners faster. If you watch, he's setting up apex in the corners a little bit differently. And there he goes, way to the inside, looking for a line around. And and we'll see as they go into these off camber corners. There's, there's some ruts developed on the outside, or some nice berms. And yeah, Ferry's trying to make that four stroke work for him as he drops in there trying to drop the wheel in and see if he can get the power drive out of it. Michael Byrne doing a great job, though, of holding him off. So it is Byrne currently running in fourth, Tim Ferry running in fifth, trying to move up. Your leader continues to be that man, Ricky Carmichael, number four on board the four-stroke Honda. When we come back, more from Bud's Creek, Maryland. You're running order, Carmichael, Reed, and Villeman, top three. Join us all summer long for ES Moto number two, your leader, Ricky Carmichael, number four, out in front, got the whole shot and has not looked back. It has been a good day for Ricky Carmichael. And Cameron, it looks like number 100, despite the face that Gosler's putting on there. Mike Gosler looks pretty nervous. It looks like Ricky is in line to get that 100th victory. Yeah, for sure. Game face. Can you see Tim Ferry trying some different lines? A lot of people been going to the outside, and Timmy trying to go inside, and then maybe apex his corner, carry a little speed, Whoa. cuts to the inside, and not going to be able to make it stick just yet and he'll dive to the inside and yeah red dog going to it lowly michael byrne into a sense of comfort right there as byrne goes high and wide and tim ferry number 15 on board that yamaha the four stroke drops inside and moves up yet another position well, it's a good battle here. Your friend, James Pavoni Jr., number 64, running in sixth place right now, but Ernesto Fonseca, number 24, on board the Honda two-stroke, picks him off. 
And Fonseca just risked it more there. He held the gas on longer and flew farther down Henry Hill there and, and just could drive farther into the corner. And then this is the battle for 10th right here. Clark Stiles is number 34. 108 is Joaquin Rodriguez. And Kevin Windham, number 14, has moved up quite a bit from his 21st position. Windham having a bit of a tough go working through traffic. And Joaquin Rodriguez has had a ton of bad luck and some injuries. And seems to be on the gas a bad first motor for Joaquin. We right. saw his bike shut off. And look at that. Joaquin wow. going inside on the Alabama slammer, Clark Stiles. And he gets by, but Clark's not giving up. But look at this. Right by both of them, Wyndham comes up on the inside of that off camera and just goes on outside and pushes Joaquin just a little bit, takes both positions. Wow. So Kevin Wyndham was in 21st place, is now sitting in 10th and moving up. And you see he sets it up, gets on the gas, and drives to that inside. Now he knows he's got to drift to the outside because of how steep this is, how sharp this edge is. But he sees he's got the wheel on him, just going to go out, give a little push, actually uses Joaquin as the berm, as we say, <laughs> takes the line, and actually he blows over the line he was looking at. Joaquin goes to the outside, and a, a great move by Kevin Windham. All right, so Kevin Windham is in the top 10 now, and he's not happy with that. This is Nice in front of him. We'll see if he can pick this one off. Jim Nice is number 142. And you see Kevin using the lines. He went outside in. Now let's see what he does here. Setting up. He's going to take that outside line, and then he's going to sweep around, try to set himself up for a different line. Real smart racing by Kevin Wyndham, staying out of the roost, but also picking other lines that he can go fast on. You know, obviously there's a faster line than any other on the track, and Nice is probably in the fastest line, so Kevin has to be a faster and smarter rider to be able to get around him. And a little creativity doesn't hurt, and this time it pays off for Kevin Wyndham. Jim Nice has to go wide on that one, and Kevin Wyndham moves up another position, so Wyndham now sitting in ninth, and it was just moments ago, it seemed like, that he got together with Ginolfi, and he got 21st, so Wyndham gets a face full of roost, but he's in ninth place and moving up fast. As Wyndham continues to work his way around, we remind you that Ricky Carmichael continues to lead. He is out in front, and he did pick up the victory in motor number one. Craig Anderson is just ahead of Wyndham, currently sitting in eighth. And Craig's been, you know, really a guy that He's, he's been off the pace. It's just kind of weird. At, at times in practice, it shows, shows some real speed, and he's one of those guys a lot of people were talking about when he came over from Australia. You know, with the speed, and you know, he has the physical training, and we saw him uh, win an outdoor right. national last year in the 125 class, but he just hasn't had a lot of success. Craig Anderson, number 30, as Cameron pointed out, from Australia, the cousin of Chad Reed. A very talented rider, and we expect big things in the future, but, you know, transition is definitely taking its toll on him right now and hopefully it's not shattering his confidence too much but the kid certainly does have ability right now it's 64 for Volney 30 is Anderson and here comes Kevin Windham looking for the two for one pass looks like he's got the positioning on Anderson is he dropping in the inside here yes you see him work the brakey bumps and fall to the inside look at this drop into the inside again just great moves by Kevin Windham all around this track here and Wow, it just makes you think, what if Kevin Wyndham had a better start? Yeah, that's that's the frustrating part. I'm not sure what was going on with his starts here. You know, the start on this moto is so far back. So Kevin Wyndham now sits in eighth place as he moves up with James Pavoni just in front of him. Ricky Carmichael continues to lead with Chad Reed also up in the front of the pack. But Kevin Wyndham, we're keeping a close eye on him because he got third, or fourth, excuse me, in the first moto. And he needs to place better here if he wants any shot at getting on the podium. And definitely working the lines on Pavoni. And if Pavone, even if Pavoni gives up this spot to Kevin Windham, he's still going to finish inside the right. top ten as long as he doesn't keep moving backwards. But right now, he's fighting it out with K-Dub. I mean, this is a guy who won nationals last year, and and uh, he, he needs to get a break. But, but Pavoni's doing a great job keeping him at bay. And just as Cameron says that, Wyndham goes to the outside, look at him dropping the throttle down there, brings the nose up, keeps it down, comes on the corner, hugs it a little bit, not as tight as I thought he would, but Pavoni was right behind him, so he didn't have to protect the inside line, and now Kevin Wyndham is in seventh place. So the Wyndham onslaught continues as Ricky Carmichael runs away with it out in front. Carmichael picked up the whole shot here in moto number two in front of his grandfather, dedicating the victory, or his 100th victory, which he hopes comes today, at Bud's Creek. We'll step aside. When we come back, we'll wrap things up. The 2000.
2004 AMA Chevrolet Motocross Championships have been brought to you by Suzuki, maker of performance-driven motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. By Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. By Chevrolet, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months. The new Chevrolet, an American revolution. And by Cycle World Magazine, the most widely read and trusted source for motorcycling information. So it comes down to this, Ricky Carmichael on a quest, not looking for the Holy Grail, but looking for the century mark. The 100th victory is within his grasp, but we've got some great battling behind him. Kevin Windham moving up to the pack, now running even with Michael Byrne in the battle for fifth. And just using the lines again, outside that. in, pushes Burner out to the outside and just swoops it away. Great job for Burner. He's been riding great today, but Kevin Windham, I think he just had something to prove in this moto, you know, getting far back and probably a little frustrated. And speaking of something to prove, Red Dog's proven that he has been training and coming back quickly from his injury. No question about Tim Ferry, number 15's fitness level as the white flag comes out for Ricky Carmichael. One lap to go to greatness. Carmichael on track to pick up his 100th victory. And Cameron, what can you say that we haven't said about this guy already? He has been absolutely phenomenal. Pound for pound, the best motorcycle racer in the world. Well, he's definitely proven that he's the best current rider, but the record books also dictate that he is the best rider ever. I mean, you've got your arguments, all the riders, everybody has their favorites, but the record books don't lie, and, and it says he's the best, and watching him, you got to believe it. Love him or hate him, the kid can ride that thing like no one else. Ricky Carmichael has been phenomenal. This is the white flag lap, and with that, Let's send it down to Jamie Little one more time. Who's with his mechanic, Mike Gossler. Mike, I know the credit always goes to the rider for his wins and his records, but what would this 100th victory mean to you? This is the greatest thing to be a part of. You know, I mean, it's amazing the guys won that many races. But I think it's just as hungry, you know, the 100th win or the 10th win. It's, he still wants to win really bad. And to be affiliated with a rider that's so talented. Yeah, I mean, it makes work so much more gratifying, you know. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. It's not over yet. <laughs> oh, Goose needs to relax. Look at his rider. This guy is just unbelievable. Ricky Carmichael, go ahead and take that patch of 99 off his britches and get ready to drop the century mark on there. He's done everything we thought he would, Cameron, and then some. I think now he just pays it off by going for the perfect season this year again and, and just silencing anybody who ever doubted Ricky Carmichael and it's going to be an interesting year next year, obviously, with the change, but just to be able to go to the races and watch this guy race and talk to him, and he's such a good guy, a personable guy. He works hard. I mean, he deserves everything he gets. And I think the key there is work. This guy works nonstop. Your winner, 250 class on the day, Ricky Carmichael picks up the magical 100. You think he's not happy? Unbelievable. It's no matter how much he pressed for it, when it actually happens, yeah. it's just the emotion. And I, I think a victory lap has been well deserved at this one. It has been a team effort. Ricky Carmichael has done the work. Honda's been there for him. Oakley, Fox, the list goes on and on. As we take a look at the Suzuki final results, Ricky Carmichael, Chad Reed, David Billiman, Tim Ferry, and Kevin Windham ends up in the top five. James Pavone, a good run for him as he finishes up in 11th. Right now, let's set it down to Jamie with the winner. Well, nobody thought they'd see anybody beat Jeremy McGrath's record for all-time wins, but Ricky Carmichael just did it. 100 wins. Ricky, you're only 24. How does that happen? I tell you, man, I, I, I can't believe it. It's a, really a milestone and a to win 100 races, man, it makes me feel old. But I, like you said, I, I'm only 24, and uh, to be out there with guys like Jeremy, and uh, it feels unbelievable. I am so happy. I know it's going to sink in tomorrow, and, uh, and the day went so awesome for it to happen. You know, on Father's Day, and my papa's here, and uh, oh man, I'm, I'm just so happy. I, I can't believe it. Like 100 wins, it doesn't even seem like I've raced that many times. You love this.
this place. You've won here for five years in a row. What a great Father's Day present for your dad. Heck of a Father's Day present, you know. Uh, I'm really pumped to have a dad like I do. He, you know, he sacrificed a lot, along with a lot of the other fathers also. And, uh, I'm really lucky, and uh, I tell you, to get this 100th win for myself and uh, my whole team behind me that has helped me for the first win, it's awesome. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you. Well, he has certainly earned it, and it looks like a triple X jersey with all 100 wins of Fox Skull and Crossbones on there. Ricky has earned every single one of them, and check it out, Carmichael Reed Billiman. Big news for James Pavone getting his best ever finish at ninth, and let's go back to Jamie. Well, there's been four races, and Chad Reed has been on the podium all four times for the overalls. You're getting better all the time, Chad, and I know this is something new for you. Outdoor Nationals only second year, but how are you feeling at this point? Definitely. It's tough. You know, I'm racing the, the winningest rider of all times, and uh, that's, a, that's a great achievement for Ricky, you know, 100 wins, and congratulating him on that. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to taking steps forward and, and trying to get out there and race and, uh, Try to get up there close to the like I'm having a lot of fun this year. My four strikes running awesome. You know, the guys made it a lot smoother, a lot easier for us to ride. And uh, all the guys, Thor, Putz, and Limited are doing a great job. And I'm happy to be here. And our congratulations to Ricky Carmichael on the victory. After four races, he has got a perfect 200 points. Chad Reed said it best. What an accomplishment. So as we say goodbye, we remember Ricky Carmichael up through the days of 100. And it is Carmichael who reigns supreme at Bud's Creek. Congratulations to Ricky and all those who support him and make him the writer he is. Cameron, your final thought. Just an unbelievable day and watching history unfold in front of us. It's an honor to be here. So on behalf of Cameron Steele and Jamie Little, I'm Todd Harris saying so long from Bud's Creek, Maryland. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Your winner, Ricky Carmichael.